everybody I'm back uh, this time with a, a mail day uh, some of the items uh, eight packages that I've gotten over the last week and I've already opened them up to a certain degree so it'll be a little bit faster but uh, starting here I got a, a couple cards that I ordered looks like the uh, 1960 uh, Hoyt Wilhelm Leaf uh, now this is a, a set that was made in, this, in 1960 obviously it was uh, you couldn't sell them with gum, so they, they were actually had a marble in the pack, a five cent pack of a company called Sports Novelties out of Chicago. There are not a lot of big names in this uh, set, but uh, Hoyt Wilhelm and there's a Jim Bunning, uh, Brooks Robinson, a Duke Schneider, those are some of the big names, but not a whole lot of big names on that set. But this is just something I thought I'd add, uh, not an expensive car, but something I'd add to the Hoyt Wilhelm collection. And then uh, in uh, in tune with my recent uh, desire to get a bunch of Hank Aaron and Willie Mays and Roberto Clemente. Here's this 1974 top special with a Hank Aaron. It shows his cards from 58 to uh, 1961. That's pretty cool. Looking to get the other ones. Oh, this is the first one of them I've gotten so far. On the back, it kind of gives some of his most memorable moments. Okay, a nice uh, multiplayer card with uh, Willie Mays here, this Stan Musial and Willie Mays, 1963 Pride of the National League. This is the last year that Stan Musial had a card. So 63 again, tough on those, uh, tough on those borders there, so that's a nice grade. something a little different. A uh, Topps coin. This is the all-star variation from 1964. Uh, these were inserted into 64 packs. You'd get a coin with each pack. Uh, there's quite a few cards or coins in this set. So this is for my Frank Robinson collection. Nice little coin. Still need to get the regular 64 for Frank Robinson. Okay. Oh, here's another Willie Mays card. A really cool one. I think this one, uh, somebody mentioned the other day, might have been uh, listed in the, the top 300 cards and they were trying to collect it. Uh, there's a couple of these for bid on eBay last week and uh, I didn't win the one, so I won this one. I was the only bidder on it. So I probably paid a little bit more than I probably should have, but uh, still a cool card. Really cool card. On the back, talks about the maze catch there. Okay, Catfish Hunter. So I have a, a couple gem Catfish Hunter cards. And here's a 68 card. Looks really clean. I like the 68s. They're easy to get in a good grade there. And Jim Hunter, Catfish Hunter, is a kind of a maybe an undervalued guy at this point. His stuff is very, very inexpensive for the Hall of Fame career that he had. So uh, not a bad pickup there. Okay, oh, now I really like this card. Um, I remember when Topps did the commemorative cards back in 97 with Willie Mays. I remember pulling one of these uh, reprints out of there and thinking that's a pretty sweet card. It would be awesome to have that in a legitimate, you know, old school 1960. So finally got it. Uh, I like the 60 All Star set. I love, I just love the, the graphics of the 60 in the background. Super cool. So uh, I just recently got the Hank Aaron in a 7, so I got the Maze in a 7 as well. On the back they got a nice little cartoon. Okay, here's a couple of cards here. I'll start with this first one here. Wow, this is a really nice uh, 72 Tops Rod Carew. So this is... Um, this is a short print, high number, 695. I have his an action card in a seven as well, but it is not nearly as nice as this. This is a this seven is probably one of the nicer sevens I've seen in a while. The corners, I mean everything on this thing looks perfect that I can see just from the eye right now. Perfectly dead center. Four sharp corners, all the edges are nice. I don't see anything on any uh, surface wrinkles or creases. 
Wow, yeah, the back's clean too. Super nice card. Boy, I, I feel for the guy that got this one graded. Tough, tough grade of a seven. That looks like it could be an eight or even higher. Definitely glad he got it. I paid a lot for it, but uh, considering how nicely centered it was when I got it, I'm even more pleased with it now that I have it in hand and I've seen it. And this Killer Brew as well, man, another one. It looks like uh, serial-wise they were graded in the same batch. They're just a couple numbers off. So they must have, uh, the person grading this must have been a really tough grader. And we know this grading is all subjective, so. I mean, I, just that, that maze here that I had, looking at the quality of the sevens on these. I mean, it's not even close. The, uh, the Killer Brew and the Carew are, are way better. Their corners are much nicer. Card and color is much cleaner. But uh, yeah, nice 1961 Harmon Killer Brew. Yeah, super clean. Nice card. Definitely nice to get that. It's always nice to get a seven or a card that uh, you get in the mail and you look at it and say, well, that could be better than that. As opposed to when you buy one and, it, and it's like, man, how did that ever get graded a seven? Okay, so uh, looks like this last card here is uh, another piece from my Frank Robinson collection. Really like these tops, tops rub offs. Uh, you get the, these as inserts and packs in 1966. Uh, the side that actually is. Uh, the right side is, is a little bit duller than if you look at the back that's uh, in the reverse mode. It's the one that's a little bit more color to it. But uh, I like these. This is the fourth one of these that I've got. And I've got the Gibson, the Marischal, and the Joe Morgan as well. And uh, this, will, this will go nicely in the collection. All right. Well, that's my uh, pickups for this week. And uh, I'll probably do another video uh, with all the other stuff that comes in uh, throughout the rest of the next week. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye.